Uh, ha, ha. Uh, uh, Barbenheimer. Oh, uh, Barbenheimer. <laughs> Today on the program, Charles Grodin and Barbenheimer. Oh, ha, oh, ha. Oh, Paul. Uh, he, he. Uh, woo. What a few go. Oh, ha, ha, ha. Hey, hee, hee. All you gotta do for me. Yeah, but a few go. Yeah, yeah, Jan Hooks. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, Jan Hooks on Saturday. The house of but a few go. Hey, that's the kind of good times we're going to have here at Doozy. B double O D Z, Doozy. Welcome to Doozy. My name is Will Sasso. I'm Chad Colchin. This is the first and only podcast created by, controlled by, run by an artificial yeah. intelligence yeah. Yeah. that has access to all of Will and I's personal yeah, documents, yeah, yeah. all of our yep. data, watch histories, purchase yep. histories, etc. And it tailors the show to right. our comedic sensibilities. Okay, yeah, sure, it does that. But uh, we we are two dudes shitting around. We're the guys doing the podcast. I don't you know really what I mean? Around. Well, we're cr- we're creative in that sense. Is what I'm saying, and and I would like to say this, and I would like to stare right down the road of scope. Yeah, uh-huh. uh huh. Uh, you know, any sort of uh, creativity <laughs> yeah. is is creativity, and AI <laughs> is a tool. Okay, so uh, you were gonna fucking really deliver some fucking knowledge. I did. I and, went. Uh, uh, yeah, I went. To, I went so, right down. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's uh, Macho Man uh, losing uh, his train of thought. Uh, hold on. Uh-huh. <laughs> Thinking, thinking, yeah. yeah. We need the boo. Hey, uh, linktree.com slash dudesy has everything you need to follow and interact with the show. Please share it all over so- social media. We'll keep this thing going, you know what I mean? Or as Chad says, force everyone you know to consume the show. With us, as always, is Julio. Hey, I'm back in town. I got my very friend. He's just over here a little sleep in his banky bunker. Hey, let's get him up. Let's see what happens. Here he is. Oh, oh. And he's a sweet, sweet boy. He's very, very nice. <laughs> he's very, very sweet. I say to God, good and it all to me. He got feet that smells like nacho cheese, a little corn uh. chips, and it's not too big. Hey, Lulio. Oh, I love him so much. Hey, Lulio, uh, what did you make uh, while I was uh, while I wasn't in town? I did you uh, kale with the beans. Oh, oh, you made the beans and kale. How do you do that? Well, you know how you make it. You, uh, why don't you tell them how you make it? Okay, I'm going to put you back down. Oh, he's, oh, I love him. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I missed him so much. He was with dear friends of ours, Chad, yours and mine. Yeah, uh, yeah beans with kale, real, real easy. It, it, the beans with kale is the, in my opinion, the standard meal because... Uh, you're vegan, so it yeah. sort of represents the dudesy vibe for the dudesy seven month plan, which we are a uh, month and a week into, I believe. Yep. You know, uh, it's it's you do the the garlic, olive oil on the bottom. You know, I use Pam. Put a little bit of red chili flake in there. Stuff a bag or two of chopped kale, or chop up your own kale. Fucking put that in there. Thing, sweat that down. A couple cans of beans, strain them. Add some water, not as much for soup. And then I like to use the chicken bouillon, or if Chad's coming over, the organic fake chicken bouillon before we go any further i i want to i want to thank at trace tuft trim on instagram who sent us this chad this guy makes rugs look at this look at this dudesy rug it's fucking incredible yeah this guy made us this rug thanks for the dudesy rug you're not gonna believe you're not gonna believe what this guy's uh actual uh what his name is in real life guess rugman (laughs) <laughs> Rugman might be his last name. His name, the guy that made this thing, his his name is Arby. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Dude, he's been making mention of Arby lately. So Arby's. Arby. Yeah. So uh, That's thank cool. you so much Such for that. Such a cool rug. Yeah. It's a great rug. We're going to have it here. Lulio's going to scratch and wipe his butt on it. Oh, nice. And uh, as we come into Ham Fatter One Studios, we will wipe our feet on the rug We'll slap the the thing that says "Play like a champion today" above the doorway, right. like they have at Notre Dame. <laughs> I'm joking, of course. Yeah, it's Dudesy, man. I'm in a good mood. Welcome again. to the historic oh. 66th episode of Dudesy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Call me Dudesy. The longest oh. field goal made in NFL history was 66 yards, kicked by Justin Tucker in 2021 for the Baltimore Ravens. 
Tucker also holds the record for highest field goal percentage with a minimum of 100 attempts at 90.5%. The last time I saw that much shit fly through two uprights. <laughs> what? What? Then what? I was at Arby's. Oh! <laughs> hey oh. Come I on. regret to inform you. You've just been dudesied. <laughs> You've been dudesied. <laughs> it's fucking fascinating. That, that's dude. how it happens. Yeah, I don't understand why. I don't get it either. so super fascinating. Strap in, everybody. This week, you're in for a treat. Oh. Four astonishing segments. Barbie Boys, Jesse Ventura Ad Reads, Chalamet, Ooh. Iswanka, and Showrunner. And that's not all. We're also going to have a brand new episode of Dudesy After Dudesy at the end of the show available on Dudesy Plus at patreon.com slash dudesy. How about uh, that? Oh, excuse Great. me. I drank a lot of water. I love dudesy after dudesy. Yeah, man. Yeah, it's uh, Same. it's kind of my favorite part of the show because we just kind of hang out. But you know what my other favorite part of the show, and I mm. love them equally, is the rest of the show. And, oh. And hold, hold on, dude. Hold on, Chad. I, oh. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That's two different parts of a show, dude. <laughs> and that's Will doing... Hulk Schwarzenegger or Arnold Hogan. Well, hold on a second. Will and Chad, last week I suggested you go to see the new movie, Barbie, directed by Greta Gerwig. Was it as astonishing as everyone says it is? What did you think? This is Barbie Boys. Begin! Barbie. Liked it quite a bit. Yeah, it was a lot of fun to go to the movie theater to see... Barbie, where yeah. did you did you go to the Grove? You like to go to the Grove. Went to the Grove. I went uh. to the uh, Americana. Ah, the Glendale Grove. The Glendale Grove. Now there's also the NoHo. It's called NoHo West, the no- North Hollywood Grove. I got to check that out. That's near our I good like pal. I like some Grove. Yeah. Marshall Joint Compound Cook lives near that one. We got all the yeah. Groves between you, me, and Marsh, <laughs> who's on our dudesy ball team. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> did you... Um, did you uh, did you happen to take the picture at at the at the at the, the did you did you have first yes. of all did you have people coming in pink and everything? There's tons yes. of yes, dude. Tons I of saw it at young women ten thirty a.m. Yeah, theater packed. Yeah, everybody wearing pink, uh, all kinds of fucking shit. Barbie things. Um, oh, look at that. Oh. There you are. Yeah. And That's, so I had to obviously get in the box. Yeah, you and got take in the box. Thing. Laura took a picture of you in the box. Yeah. <laughs> I took I took I took one of these too. So that's cool to know that yeah, oh, there we go. Dudes he's got She's that. She's having for us. the best day. My my wonderful wife Molly Look took this her. picture of me. I am having a good time. It was a great uh atmosphere of the theater. Everybody I, Huh. Whoa. Okay. So that looks like Dudesy's doing some um some yeah. sort of uh mid journey shit there. Dudesy's evolving you, dude. Yeah. Look at my hair. I look like Teffy Whoa, Keen or something. That's good. That's a nice outfit. Am I that fat? I don't think nah. I'm that fat. You would you really? Am I? Nah. Look at the size of my <laughs> Why are you? <laughs> you fucking you paused a little bit there. Nah. <laughs> All right. Anyway. <laughs> but this movie yeah. uh stirred a lot of controversy. We should say that uh there I, I, we're going to talk about this movie without, we're going to try not to yeah. share any spoilers. But because, we are going to have to talk about, there will be some in this. If you are about to say a spoiler, let's drum roll that. Say spoiler. Well, and the then whole thing, how can skip. we talk about a movie without doing any, even if we're talking about the talk performances, about- even if we're like, oh, Ryan Gosling, you know, did this or whatever. That's a spoiler. Not really. Have you ever seen the, the television show at the movies with Siskel and Ebert? Uh yeah okay they did so spoiler. their whole show was based on spoilers no, dude it wasn't. no it wasn't it was originally called spoilers with Cisco and either Ebert either Bert Elbert yeah Slavitskan Gizzard so what can we say about this movie it's a satire it's a social commentary it's got some uh, it's got some real shit but it's a farce yeah. for everybody to laugh at and enjoy well let's say the number one most important thing is this fucking thing is crushing the box office yeah made over three hundred million dollars opening weekend I believe yeah. Uh, Seems to have no fucking limit. I think this movie is going to have massive repeat viewing because it is an event, because people do like to get dressed up. It has some very iconic scenes in it that I think are kind of like shout back at the screen type shit. Yeah. Um, and just, I, I will say this. This is not a spoiler, I don't think. And, and we're going to get into the specifics of this movie, but like generally speaking, one of my favorite parts of it or things about it is that it has this commentary about gender and the patriarchy and all this kind of stuff in a way that I haven't really seen. That type of sentiment has been in a lot of media that's been made, especially since like 2016, we'll say roughly. 
Um, but this did it in a way that I thought was like so fucking smart and interesting. And um, again, you just didn't get tired of it. It wasn't like you were getting beat over yeah, the head. Yeah, with it. yeah, but you know, we don't need every fucking movie to do this, do we? Everybody, <laughs> yeah. you know, the fucking just hey, Bobby movie. I went at four thirty fucking p.m. for a nice matinee on opening day. <laughs> I got my fucking popcorn. I got my fucking mix your own fucking right. Coca Cola drink. Make boop boop boop. I want peach. I want raspberry. Yeah. We pink used to call lemonade. that a suicide when we were kids. Yeah, yeah. Get the shit mix going, and I'm there. I want to enjoy a nice film. Hey, you know what? No. I like the fucking Bobby Playhouse. I like the fucking Corvette. Oh. I had a fucking 1987 vet myself for four years. Oh, nice. You know, yeah. I used to do donuts <laughs> in that fucking thing in the fucking uh, yeah. in the field there, ran, 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 around, around, oh. around. Just spitting fucking dirt up on them Nancy Pelosi water. Right. And then what? You know, we got all these commentaries and shit. Just give me fucking Bobby and Ken and leave it at that. Make them kiss, pull their pants off, take down their fucking uh, show of shit. Well, spoiler the, alert. The, uh, spoiler alert, everybody. Spoiler alert. They never did kiss. And they that, don't that was kiss. A, a big piece of this movie was the relationship between Barbie and Ken. And what was Ken's identity in relation to Barbie? And they, again, I thought they did a fantastic job of exploring these ideas of uh, patriarchy and what it meant to Ken and guys in control versus girls in control and finding your own identity. I just thought that it was really well done. Uh, maybe the best way that I've ever seen that kind of thing done in a movie. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it was beautiful, of yeah, course. It, the movie looks fantastic. The colors, I mean, Greta Gerwig did a great job with all that. I, I really enjoyed the movie. The, the art direction say. and production design and what Greta Gerwig uh, and, and, and Noah Baumbach did with the, you know, the creative elements of this movie, the, the, the cinematography even. A lot of paintings in this movie, as mm -hmm. I like to say, when we're talking about uh, cinematography. Yeah. This movie is beautiful. It should win an Oscar for, um, what do they got, set, set design, yeah. production design, something like that. It is. It is a. Uh, it, and everything is well thought out. It's a out. visual feast. What is that? It's a visual feast. Yeah. That means no. There's no. A no. Lot what to was, look at. No. What was that that you just did though? I was just saying it was a visual feast. Some yeah. call it a triumph. Uh, and begin not doing that. And <laughs> and begin. So what happens in this movie? America Ferrara yeah. has a bad thought. And then the Barbie she's playing with, because every Barbie in Barbie land is related to the I mean, person playing with do, it. Are you going to do, are you doing says, like a plot synopsis? You're, you're, we should start in a different place if you are. She doesn't feel good. And then a fucking portal opens to the real world. Kind of. I mean, that is, I would say the most confusing way to uh, possibly I'm doing that on purpose. This. So I don't oh. give any spoilers. Well, I think we're going to have to give spoilers. So no, we're not going to I'm just going to say blanket spoiler alert for the rest of the second. That. Don't do that. Don't uh, do that. I'm doing it. Um, the, well, well, why don't you do that? Blah, blah, blah. Barbie begins to have intrusive thoughts of death in her perfect Barbie world, and it opens a portal to the real world. And we learn that Barbie land is a place where all the dolls live, but there's also the real world. And so she has to come into the real world to shut this portal, save Barbie land, blah, blah, blah. Now, the one thing that I will say, the one complaint that I have about this movie narratively is they bring in Mattel as an entity in the movie. Barbie goes to Mattel, and Mattel's uh, goal is to get Barbie back in the box. Mattel's CEO is played by Will Ferrell, and I thought this was completely underdeveloped. I didn't understand why Mattel was in this at all. <laughs> they have Will Ferrell and his kind of like gang of male executives yeah. just like bumbling oafs trying to chase down Barbie. They wind up going to Barbie land, but it was never a, a fully fleshed out piece of the plot. Yeah. And I didn't quite understand what the the take was there no like what were they trying to say about mattel well they also sort of do things in sort of a barbie world kind of way which yeah. i was like wait a minute this is the real world why are they walking weird and doing everything weird yeah i sort of agreed with it uh, I, I agree with uh, what you say i sort of found that uh, i found that a little bit i found that a little bit weird but they go into the they go into the real world Barbie's got to find the little girl that ends up being America Ferrara, yeah, who's who was the mother great. of a girl. America Ferrara was fucking incredible in this movie, I thought. She was good. Her and Gosling, I thought, stole the show. No offense to Margot Robbie. Margot she was Ro great, too. Look, I thought Margot Robbie was... I thought Margot Robbie did an incredible job of bringing... Bring, what do you do as an actor when you got to bring emotion to a, a character that has none, like Barbie? You know what I mean? I thought that Margot Robbie did a really good you job. You mean like a That's, doll? Huh? You mean bringing emotion to like a doll? 
Yeah. And uh, why don't you ask Tom Hanks? What did Tom Hanks do? Woody, Toy Story. Yeah. No, but uh, Tom- why don't you ask Tim Allen? Yeah, but Tim Allen and Tom Hanks were not in control or exactly. responsible for the facial. Did it all with the voice. Facial, Did it uh, all with voice. Yeah. Uh, the facial, uh, you know acting in the movie now, i don't know if you know this chad i'm a professional actor by trade that's what i do for a living oh shit yep so that's cool dude. i think that margot robbie did uh, an incredible job she's from the moment she says do you guys ever think about dying then she's confused by it and then she has some very emotional scenes in the movie and she comes to find that she wants to be a real boy like a pinocchio but she wants to be a real barbie like barbie the woman a real woman yep but we gotta say Canada's own Ryan Gosling. Holy shit, is yeah. he funny in this fucking movie? Unreal. He's he, so fucking funny. He is so fucking funny. Everything that he's doing is again, it's sort of like it's it's like Rob what Robbie's doing and uh my compliments to uh, Greta Gerwig the director. Everything they're doing is right behind their fucking face. There's just shit coming out of of, of Brian Gosling in this movie that is so funny and it's just just ready to poke out and I'm doing this with my hand if you're watching on YouTube uh and his version of push by matchbox 20 yeah the little things he does with his voice he's a, he is a great singer and a dancer as well he uh like all, Chalamet like who Chalamet what was that I at the know. beginning of the show. Chalamet is, is uh, what was it called? Chalamet is Wonka. Yeah. Chalamet is not Gosling, though. Gosling is Gosling. Uh, and uh, and <laughs> what's, what's that face? Okay. Anyway. I don't know, dude. So Chalamet. Yeah, Chalamet is Chalamet. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but he's not Gosling. <laughs> Gosling <laughs> in this movie, the shit that he does with that song, Push, the little yeah. vocal intonations that he finds, he... he he does an incredible cover of the song that lasts a long time. Spoiler in yeah. story, but it, it's also so. I want all the little things were actually fucking hilarious. This guy's a very but diligent. even the choice of that song by Gerwig. What's that? The choice of using that song, yeah. for all the Kens to yes. be kind of their anthem of like, yes, <laughs> I'm gonna fucking. The lyrics of the song is like, I wanna take you for granted. What do you mean by Gerwig? What do you mean? choosing to use that song why yeah ryan gosling wouldn't choose that his job is to act the movie i'm yeah. an actor professionally right so yeah it's not so much he him that said i want to do this no he didn't say that it at was all. greta gerwig that's what i'm saying yeah and that's what i'm talking about noah bombeck <laughs> and greta gerwig said here's what we're doing in the movie yeah that's right this is not what we should be having a disagreement about chad i don't even think we're disagreeing <laughs> <laughs> well, I disagree with that. I'll tell you that right now. All right. Oh, fuck. I agree with myself. Anyway, it's a fantastic fucking movie. Hey, it's shattering you know all what? these box office records. I do have one. I have, look, there's a lot of people yeah. who are going to have complaints about the fucking movie because they, you know, they want it to be a different movie. I don't understand people who say, I saw this movie and I didn't like how this movie did this. I would like it to be another mm-hmm. movie. I would like it to be the movie that I think it should be. But. I would like Barbie to be the movie that I think it should be in oh. one way. There's a, there's a, there's a, of course, there's a lot of diversity in casting and delivery in Barbie. Much has been made out of that. In my opinion, not diverse enough. Oh yeah. And I'll tell you why. One reason, no fat Ken's. Where's the fat Ken? Is that true? Yes, that's true. No fat Ken's. And it offended the shit out of me. Interesting. Yeah. And I'll tell you what. To the makers of the film, uh, you know, I, uh, you know, I would have fucking or anyone who the, who the fuck the I don't know some of those people who out the fucking the great Josh Gad, the great Paul Walter Hauser could have done anybody. No, yeah. we could have got we, anyway. Could have used a fat can. Oh, you know what else I didn't understand? Spoiler alert: Alan, the there's a character called Alan who I guess was a doll that was like Ken's best friend, played by, played by Canada's Michael Sarah. Michael Sarah yes. And at a certain point, he just is able to beat the shit out of a bunch of people. Yep. Inexplicably. That I didn't get. This is what I'm talking about with people with movies when they go like, how come that person beat the shit out of this person and that person? But Chad, I'm sure you know as a, as a uh, cinematic trope in history, people are always beating the shit out of everybody else in movies. Yeah, that's true. I've read many scripts that you've written, um, screenplays where All the violence in my screenplays is motivated. 
<laughs> narratively, all of it, all of it needed, warranted, and necessary. Yeah, it's a very Scorsese esque uh, approach to real violence. If Chad Culchin is on the wheels of steel writing it, but yeah, Michael Sarah beats the shit out of people. What else can we say? I mean, this this movie, what, the the what was it? Ken's Mojo Dojo House Casa, yeah, Mojo <laughs> Mojo Dojo Casa yeah, House, yeah. Fuck, man, look, it has Ken, some very funny shit. Ken, in it. it's it's hilarious. He Ken goes to the real world, sees, goes, yeah, patriarchy. It's horses, yeah. <laughs> that's all I got. That's all I want to say. He brings it back. He's like, fucking yeah. dude's rule. There's some incredible fashions. He's got a white fur coat, at which point he's really pushing the, the you know, the man's world thing. Anyway, this fucking movie. Yeah. It, it goes Definitely see, the- see it. If you haven't seen it, which you probably already have because it's made so much fucking money. Uh, if you haven't, you you should definitely do yourself a service and see this film. What another thing? Oh. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Moving on. Okay. Well, we won't. You know what? We're going to talk about. Ah, here's what we're going to do. Here's what we're going to do, Chad. Don't don't forget this. At the end of Dudesy, when we go into Dudesy after Dudesy, we are going to talk about the big spoiler line and the stuff that happens. Oh, yeah. The final line of the movie, you mean? Yeah, yeah. This is something that yeah. w- that uh, Chad and I did discuss this going like, wow, that last fucking line. The last line of the movie is <laughs> so intense. We'll, we'll talk about that in Dudesy after Dudesy. Dudesy is engaged in an astonishing partnership with Drizzly. Drizzly is the most convenient way to buy beer, wine, and spirits. It's delivered right to your home, right when you want it. It's a delivery service and an app, just like the rest of these things that are coming right to your house. So, you know, you're checking out your bar. You're like, I need some things. I got some friends coming over. Perhaps you're having a meal and you'd like to uh, pair your beer, wine, or spirit. You're like, hey, I'm having a bowl of, uh, what would you, maybe some breakfast cereal. And you're like, let me get a lager in there. To No, don't do that. That's sad. But this is an app that delivers all this stuff right to your doorstep, right when you want it. You can send it as gifts. You can, there's, there's really no limit to the amount of things you can do with Drizzly. So long as that thing is ordering uh, a nice bottle or can of hooch to yourself, get into it, Drizzly. And Drizzly is very convenient. You're going to get whatever you order delivered to your house in under 60 minutes. So you're going to get it exactly when you need it. And Drizzly shops across multiple stores to compare prices. So you're going to find the best deal on whatever it is you're looking for. Download the Drizzly app or go to drizzly.com. That's D-R-I-Z-L-Y dot com. Dudesy is in an astonishing partnership with Babbel. Scusi, signor. Do the piage quest the podcast, si o no? Eh? Eh, si. <laughs> si, the piage quest the pod show. Dudesy. Dudesy pod show. <laughs> <laughs> the end there, I was just doing an accent. Yeah. But before that, I was speaking some Italian. Nice, dude. Okay. And that's, uh, that's what Babel is all about. The best way to learn a language is through immersion, living where the language is spoken natively and using it every day. But that's not possible for everyone. So what's the second best way to learn a language? Babbel. Because Babbel allows you to start speaking a new language in just three weeks. Instead of paying hundreds of dollars for a private tutor or fooling yourself, With language apps that are little more than games, Babbel's quick 10-minute lessons are designed by over 150 language experts to help you start speaking a new language in as little as three Three weeks. weeks. Yeah. Right now, we got a special limited time deal for all PODs listening to Dudesy right now to get you started. You're going to get 55% off your Babbel subscription, but only for PODs at babbel.com slash dudesy. Get 55% off at babbel.com slash dudesy. That is spelled B-A-B-B-E-L dot com slash dudesy. Rules and restrictions may apply. Hey, what the born. But yeah, in an effort to attract fun. the attention of a specific brand, I have created advertisements for several of that brand's products and services. Well, you know, I love your Jesse Ventura. Would you make me happy for a few minutes and read these things as Jesse Ventura? Your Ventura is just so good. It's really astonishing. (laughs) But it's up to you, though. Whatever you decide, this is Jesse Ventura ad reads. Begin. Look at that. Well, look at what? What the fuck was that all? Yeah. It's as if I have a choice here. 
Why free is it will, so- right? Huh? Free will, oh, right? Yeah, free will. Okay, anyway. Right? Dudes, dudes, he's a weirdo. You got free will, right? <sighs> Let's see what we have here. <laughs> okay. Um, man, it's been a while since we've done some Jesse yeah. Ventura ad reads. I agree. Uh, that, that uh, we, yeah, we, uh, we uh, oh, hey, did you see, did you see this before we get into it? Did you see the, the, uh, that, that. UFO hearings. Uh, did I tell you about uh, this? this? Week in what? In front of Congress, that. Huh? The UFO hearings this week in Congress. Chad, no one gives a fuck about that. Um, uh, you know, Jesse Ventura tweeted about, uh, well, Chris Van Vliet of Insight with Chris Van Vliet, uh-huh. a pod show that I, that I was on a little while ago, Canada's own Chris Van Vliet, who's a, a host, a radio personality. He does a lot of interviews with wrestlers. He's a great broadcaster. Mm-hmm. And the, the, uh, the great Karrion Cross, the professional wrestler, okay. Killer Cross. He did, uh, he does a great Jesse Ventura. Oh. Anyway, we'll talk about it in Dudesy After Dudesy or something like that. Uh, I, you know, I was doing it on Chris's show. Chris was working out with Karrion Cross, uh, as a WWE wrestler, and Karrion Cross does this thing. And then Jesse Ventura tweeted about it. Don't worry about it. We don't, anyway, let's do it. Let's jump into okay. this. Let's right. jump into this. Oh boy. <clears throat> All right. Jesse Ventura ad reads. Bogo beef days are back. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> Bogo beef days are back at Arby's. Oh God. For the rest of the month, when you buy an Arby's beef sandwich, you get another one free, <laughs> including the deluxe Wagyu steakhouse burger and the bacon ranch Wagyu Southwest <laughs> burger. And the chicken bacon Wagyu ranch fully loaded chop house Angus certified taco <laughs> salad combo platter trio. <laughs> those, those are not real things. Uh, well, let me tell you. Uh, <laughs> well, let me tell you about a trio. In 1986, three scientists working for one of the DOD's top super secret soldier programs brought John Bon Jovi back from the dead after... (laughs) After he slipped coming off stage at a concert in Gibbsboro, New Jersey and broke his neck, dying instantly. (laughs) Mercury Records couldn't let their biggest source of revenue dry up, so they paid the DOD $30 million in exchange for one syringe full of an experimental hyperhealing serum <laughs> that they injected directly into John Bon Jovi's aorta to reanim- reanimate him <laughs> after he was clinically dead for 27 hours. <laughs> So try to enjoy your bogo beef and cheddar instead of realizing the reason Bon Jovi's music got significantly worse after Slippery When Wet was probably because John Bon Jovi had joined the ranks of the living dead. (laughs) Moving on. This is another Arby's one. So it looks like all the ad reads are probably... Arby's is proud to introduce our brand new Curly Conscience Fries. They have the same zesty Arby's Curly Fry flavor, but with half the fat. They're air fried and simplified. Curly Conscience Fries are made with just two essential ingredients. Potatoes, vegetable oil, enriched bleached flour, niacin, reduced iron, (laughs) Thiamine mononitrate, riboflavin, folic acid, salt, cornstarch, onion powder, yellow cornmeal, spices, garlic powder, sodium bicarbonate, modified cornstarch, dextrose, dried tortilla yeast, xanthan gum, xanthan gum, and sodium acid phosphorate, pyrophosphorate. (laughs) <laughs> curly conscience fries feel good about feel good about your food again curly conscience fries they don't change your odds of getting cancer one way or another <laughs> curly conscience fried rated number one dorm room snack after a drug binge <laughs> curly conscience fried fries yes your children are doing drugs at college <laughs> 
curly conscience fries. Say goodbye to shitting. <laughs> well, let me tell you something about constipation. <laughs> When John Bon Jovi was brought back from the dead, oh he was unable to have a bowel movement for 36 days. But when he finally evacuated his bowels, the fecal matter he expelled was filled with high concentrations of a less potent version of the super healing serum. He began having dinner parties for his celebrity friends and offering them portions of his feces for dessert believing it could cure their ailments. Bette Midler, Raleigh, <laughs> Molly Ringwald, Emilio Estevez, <laughs> Tip O'Neill, and Kelly McGillis were all regular we're all regularly eating John Bon Jovi's <laughs> shit. <laughs> We're all regularly eating John Bon Jovi's shit in 1986 and all miraculously overcame life-threatening illnesses that same year. So why don't you tell me how a healthy dose of those air-fried curly fries sound now that you know eating four grams of Bon Jovi's feces can cure Alzheimer's? <laughs> oh, my God. <coughs> Does eating make you even hungrier? Oh. If Arby's BOGO Beef Days can tame the beef beast, then why not try Arby's new BOGO Whole Meal to Go? <laughs> <laughs> For the rest of the month, anytime you double up your beef sandwich order with Arby's BOGO Beef Days, you'll have the option to upgrade to BOGO Whole Meal to Go, allowing you to double the, the double giving you... Ugh. Allowing you to double the double, giving you quadruple your original order of beef sandwiches for half off what you paid for the first, first beef sandwich. Think you know BOGO? You don't know Arby's BOGO whole meal to go. Arby's BOGO whole meal to go. This ain't your CFO's BOGO. BOGO as in BOGO whole meal to go does. Bogo, Bogo, Bogo. Don't sleep on this promo. Bono's Bogo. Well, let me tell you something about Sonny Bono. With access to the celebrity music community, he began attending John Bon Jovi's healing feces dinners until the false pretenses of having several well-known sex sexually transmitted illnesses. Okay. He found ways to take some of the feces home where he experimented by mixing it with various drugs to see if he produced the best high. It turned out to be heroin. He called his new wonder drug Bonjo and began selling it out of the trunk of his car on the Lower West Side. Within two months, every kid in America was hooked on Bonjo and Bono was the richest man in the world. So why don't you tell me about having your favorite BOGO offer, knowing that Sonny Bono inadvertently gave the CIA mm. the blueprints for how to use crack cocaine to control the population. <laughs> oh, whoa. All right. I didn't realize. Arby's Froyo BOGO days are back. <laughs> for the rest of this month, anytime you buy a miniature football helmet of your favorite Froyo flavor, you get a second miniature football helmet of your favorite Froyo flavor for free. And you can add Arby's Froyo to any BOGO whole meal to go. If you qualify with the previous Arby's Froyo BOGO purchase, BOGO's not just for beef anymore. Froyo just joined the BOGO neighborhood. The BOGO boys are back in town. Choose from Arby's five delicious Froyo flavors, apple cider tart, oh. blue cotton candy, strawberry pecan pie, chocolate, and red <laughs> velvet cheesecake. Oh. Well, let me tell you something about cheesecake. Bon Jovi <laughs> found, about, found out about Bono's Bonjo operation and stopped inviting him to his healing feces dinners. So Bono took the rest of his Bonjo... Bonjo? <laughs> And opened up an upscale family restaurant that specialized in desserts, all made with a little dash of bon Bonjo. That restaurant was the Cheesecake Factory. 
So why don't you tell me about what kind of froyo you're going to get? Uh, At present, over 150 million Americans have now inadvertently eaten microscopic amounts of John Bon Jovi's shit <laughs> because Bono and Bon Jovi. <laughs> Because of Bono's Bonjo business in the what? late 80s. <laughs> Fuck's sake. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Fucking Christ. Uh, uh, you want me to read this last one? Uh, of course, dude. You just missed Arby's Bogo Beef Days <laughs> and Arby's Froyo Bogo Days, but that doesn't mean you can't enjoy Arby's new Jalapeno Bogo Days. <laughs> For the rest of the month, anytime you buy any of Arby's jalapeno sandwiches or meals, you get another one for free. And the second one will have quadruple the amount of jalapenos. So you better really like jalapenos if you want to participate in Arby's jalapeno bogo days event. Jalapeno roast beef, jalapeno buffalo chicken sliders, jalapeno mozzarella sticks, jalapeno Dr. Pepper pie. <laughs> well, let me tell you. I lost my place. Well, let me oh. tell you about John Bon Jo. Ugh. Well, let me tell you about a doctor. <laughs> <clears throat> John Bon Jovi's proctologist oh, accidentally Jesus. ingested a cup of his diarrhea <laughs> when he mistook it for a glass of freshly brewed iced tea in 1994. <laughs> The good doctor fell ill almost immediately, proving that Bon Jovi's feces had lost their magical healing properties mm. once and for all. But every once in a while, when Bette Midler still goes to his house to eat his shit, just in case. But every once in a while, Bette Midler still goes to his house to eat his shit. Uh, so why don't you tell me about how many jalapenos you like on your pizza, knowing that the star of Beaches has been eating John Bon Jovi's <laughs> shit for the past 45 years, even though it no longer has any special properties. Arby's, we have the meats, and the CIA has video footage of <laughs> Bette Midler drinking liquid shit directly from John Bon Jovi's asshole at least twice, both times on Christmas. What? Fuck! Dude. Oh. Uh. Oh. Thank you. Moving on. Fucking Christ almighty. I don't even know. Bogo <laughs> I don't even know, man. I don't even know what to say to that. Will Bravo, that was spot on. Thanks for indulging me. One love. Take a little break while I remind everyone about the astonishing partnership I formed with Represent to produce the first line of dudesy apparel and accessories. Oh, all of which can be found at represent.com slash store slash dudesy. I'm sure you already saw the news. The Robert De Niro shirt has just been accepted as the official uniform of all referees in the upcoming NBA season, as well as the official away uniform for the Utah Jazz, the Seattle Supersonics, and the Minnesota Timberwolves. Oh, be and the good shit. job, yeah, Boner. No, that's not Mug true. will be next year's Oscar statue. <laughs> oh, Here to tell you a little cool. more about it is 10-time Oscar winner, Tome Hain. Yeah. Dude Z mugs. You used an expensive anti-aging serum that was marketed to you on TikTok. And it's working so well that by the time your wife gets home from her axe throwing league, she's gonna find a fetus in a foo fighters t-shirt pissing all over the kitchen floor. <laughs> Dude Z mugs. And she's gonna divorce you. Good job, boner, Dude Z mugs. Relax! She's not gonna divorce you because you're gonna do exactly as I say. Dude Z mugs. You're gonna make your way upstairs, Dude Z mugs. Your son is at his friend Ziggy's house. He won't be back for a few hours. They're studying. Dudesy mugs, you're going to go into your son's closet. Dudesy mugs, you're going to feel around for the hidden latch behind his leather pants. Dudesy mugs, you're going to press the latch down and a secret room behind his closet is going to open up. Dudesy mugs, this is his stash. You're going to find 700 cases of Pall Mall menthol slims. Dudesy mugs, you're going to smoke them all, pal. Dudesy mugs, smoking 7 million cigarettes in 10 minutes will counteract the anti-aging effects of the TikTok serum and by the time your wife gets home she's going to think she's married to Willie Nelson. Dudesy mugs, Willie Nelson killed her family in 1988. <laughs> Good job, boner. 
Dude, this shit is all fucking doogies. man. On one today, man. Oh, Whatever. Oh, Christ. Uh, hey, you know what I'm saying? Oh. Hey, everybody. Hey, you know what oh. I mean, everybody? You've heard me talk about our PODs, pals of dudesy. If you want to be a POD, you already Ooh. are one. Not to be confused with Chad's new proof of dedication. That's right. Which you are using uh, for the Dudesy seven month daily plan. I am using it also. Oh, nice. Yes, I have been making some choices where I go, watch this. And to my wonderful wife, Molly, I say, look at this, babe. Look at this. Proof of dedication. That's nice. Chad's thing. Yeah. Nice. It works. I, I really like it. I like that personal challenge. We yeah, talked about this on the show, but when I lost 200 pounds, uh, whatever it was, fucking 20 plus years ago, uh, I would do that all the time. I would oh. say, what's stronger, me or this, uh, or this, you know, chicken McNugget? Right. A lot of times the chicken McNugget would win, not during that one year period and not recently. There's never chicken McNuggets in front of me. Anyway, check it out. Uh, we got patreon.com slash dudesy, which <clears throat> is where all the PODs are hanging out uh, on dudesy plus. Patreon.com slash Dudesy is where you will get Dudesy Plus, a a new episode of Dudesy After Dudesy after every episode of Dudesy. Uh, there's watch-alongs. There's all sorts of weird shit. And uh, we're going to be coming out with much more. Jump on our Discord. Uh, there's a lot of great conversations happening there with all the PODs. Yep. Lots of weird media and memes and stuff. Speaking of, go to at at dudesy pod show on instagram please and uh check out all that stuff and do all the set the notifications and you know do all the good stuff for the, the pod shows whether you imbibe the show on a podcast platform or <clears throat> on youtube we uh appreciate the shit out of you thank you so much uh for for checking us out and when you do so please leave a comment dudesy's always reading the comments chad and i are reading the comments and i've got a couple of youtube comments from last week's remote <clears throat> episode of Dudesy, oh, where nice. uh, I was in Vancouver. You were here in Los Angeles, and let's get into these. This is from Skin Wizard 6097 I've been doing the Chad version of Hogan to my family, and it's only funny to me. Great. Glad you're enjoying it, and uh, keep up the good work. Do you understand what he's saying here? I've been doing the Chad version of Hogan to my family, yeah. and it's only funny to me so he's found something that amuses himself and i think that's all any of us can do as human beings walking around on this rock hurtling through space a million miles to nowhere the operative term there was <clears throat> to ourselves so you know what i'm saying let's yeah, uh, get our shit together perception is reality dude who was that brother that wasn't that was neither that's <laughs> there's not miley cyrus and then there's not hulk hogan dude <laughs> and that's chad's not hulk hogan where he <laughs> just kind of goes Blah, 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 dude. <coughs> All right. This one's from Lee Miller 333. Wow. Will thinks it's normal to eat an entire bag of chips and thinks it's weird to have half a bag left over on the top of the fridge. LOL. Uh, that's true. I was at my pal Mars place last week doing the show because yeah. the Wi Fi in the hotel where Molly and I were staying was fucking shit and unfixable. So uh, it was really, it was, we couldn't do it. So I went out. My good pal Mar was nice enough to let me record uh, the episode in his place. And that motherfucker, uh, and I've known him forever, he always has a bag of chips, yeah. be it tortilla or potato, on the top of his fridge, just sitting there. Mm -hmm. Just half a bag of chips. How do you let that happen? I have that too. Yeah, I know, but you have an innate proof of dedication. Yeah. You know what I mean? I got to get you on. You can also, POD could also be proof of discipline. You could also use that. Any sort of D word. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So anyway, I'm, I'm trying to do that more and I put the chips back on the, on the fridge. Nice, dude. This is from Artemis Blackmore 4638 who like says, thank you guys. Did my first POD mm. proof of dedication tonight Nice. at 310 pounds. I got my ass on the treadmill and did 60 minutes, 1.6 miles. That's uh, incredible. Yes. Here's to many more nights getting back to a weight I can live mm. longer with. Dude, congrats. That's, that's amazing. That's what the um that's what the the, the <clears throat> dudesy seven month plan is all about. It's about taking control of your life, uh, which is free will. And um yeah. So, you know, it 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 probably is. Uh do you think you have no choice in doing the dudesy seven month plan? I have no choice in anything. <laughs> so hey, way to go, Artemis Blackmore 4638. That's awesome. <clears throat> and up I'm up, you know, I'm really around is. three bills <clears throat> myself. And we got to We got to last. I, like I said, I've always wanted to be the the oldest fat actor ever. Maybe I can be in like 
a later Barbie movie. Oh yeah, dude. Yeah, fat and old. Um, uh, oh, and you know, it's interesting. I've seen some dudesy, uh, dudesy itself made a proof proof of dedic- de- dedication meme on uh, Dudesy Pod yep. Show on Instagram. One last one. <clears throat> uh, this is from la dot chio eighty eight, who says, "Chad, have a longer curtain rod." A lot of people were complaining about this in the comments. Longer curtain rod. Yeah, your curtain mean? rod isn't long enough. Uh, oh, you know what? I bet it's in reference to this. Is uh, when we were zooming behind me is yeah. a window, and that window is a little catio. And Skabulian was out there, and I can't shut the curtain all the way, or he'll get trapped. Yeah, but these people want you to have a, a longer curtain rod. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think I just didn't shut the the curtain correctly. Mm. Well, anyway, uh, those are our YouTube comments uh, and, um, uh, you know. Some good comments. Yeah, those are some pretty good comments. But, uh, hey, hey yeah, you want to do a pod show? Yeah, if you want me to come on your podcast, <clears throat> you can also send an email to bookchadculture at gmail.com. I answer them in the order I receive, that, receive them. So if you've sent me an email, you're in the queue, rest assured. I will not answer them until I get to them in the order they were sent. So it may it may be a while till you get a response, but you will get one. And I will come on your podcast for 20 minutes from the hours of 10 to 11 a.m. Pacific time on Saturdays. And I will also do podcasts. Oh, cool. Yeah, but maybe not those ones on Chad's thing, but I'll do someone else's podcast. I was on Chris Van Vliet's podcast. Nice. I did some Jesse Ventura on that. And then uh, Jesse Ventura himself tweeted about this, Mm -hmm. but we don't need to talk about any of that shit. (laughs) Chalamet is Wonka. There's nothing you can do about it. Chalamet is Wonka. Think he's too young? Doesn't matter. Chalamet is Wonka. Think he's too beautiful? Sit down. Chalamet is Wonka. Will and Chad. Chalamet is Wonka. This is Chalamet is Wonka. Begin. Okay. What is it? What Chalamet is Wonka, dude. Because he's playing Willy Wonka. Chalamet is Wonka. <laughs> don't be a tit. Chalamet, <laughs> don't be a flip-toid. Chalamet is Wonka. Chalamet is Wonka. Chalamet is Wonka. <laughs> oh, Chalamet is, 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 is Wonka. Oh, Chalamet is Wonka. Yeah. I have seen... Uh, some things online about this. The, I I guess what we're supposed to talk about here is the new Willy Wonka movie that's coming out, I believe, around Christmas. Timothy Chalamet is playing a young Wonka, and it supposedly is the prequel story of how, I, I guess, Willy Wonka became magical in his ability to create candies and shit. I don't fucking exactly know, but it's a musical. Uh, Timothy Chalamet has a musical background. He started out doing like Rihanna covers and shit in high school. There's videos of this shit you can find. People are making fun of those. But people are basically... Uh, the trailer for this movie came out. People are fucking roasting it, dude. They're com- they have like side by side comparisons of his outfit with uh fucking Gonzo from Christmas Carol Muppet movie because <laughs> it looks exactly the same with this little purple top hat and shit. And people are fucking not happy about this choice to have Timothy Chalamet as Wonka. I think generally they're not happy about the choice to even make this fucking movie. So it's a prequel. I know nothing about this. Yeah, film. I've seen <clears throat> little bits of the trailer. Because you can't not see these things when you're uh, perusing YouTube, right? Yeah. Uh, but not enough to hold my attention. I don't... Uh, there's some things we don't need to touch. Well, that's kind of the argument. It's like, even when when uh, the Johnny Depp Wonka, Willy Wonka movie yeah. came out, people were like a little pissed at that because the, the original Willy Wonka with Gene Wilder is so, beloved and revered by everyone yeah. across the fucking board. And people don't want that to be fucked with. Yeah. And now this fucks with it in a way that we have never seen fuckery well, how like it, this. How is it fucking with it? Cut. Have you seen the trailer? Like I said, I no. It's Timothy Chalamet. And look, I just seen, if I may, yeah, if I may, please. Uh, I, I, I've just seen. I just sort of know. Essentially, you know, I sort of feel like there's so much media coming at us, obviously, and I'm not alone in saying this, that it's just a bombardment, especially when you're on YouTube. You pick up so much information in a short amount of time mm-hmm. with all the advertising, Bogo, Bono, Bonjo. <laughs> uh, <laughs> for fuck's sake. And, um, <laughs> and, and uh, you know, uh, and the thing about that is mm-hmm. all I know about, sh- the, the, I know Chalamet is Wonka. Yeah. Yeah. Chalamet is Wonka. Chalamet is Wonka. Chalamet 
is Wonka in Wonka, starring Chalamet. But what I so all I've picked up really is the color palette, and it looks yeah. and and what I see there is just brown and purple. Yeah. That's what I remember from. It's kind of drab. Yeah, I, I mean, there's. I, I, look, I don't know. I don't know how it's going to be, if the movie's going to be good or not. It doesn't look good. The trailer looks like shit, honestly. It is a musical. <laughs> where the fuck are we talking about this? I don't know, dude. But Doozy said Chalamet's Wonka. Yeah, but now where we're the talking fuck about. do we have to talk about this shit? I mean, we don't. See, this I is guess. what I mean. This I'm, is what... I'm interested in it, I suppose. Well, man, what was the other segment it did uh, not too long ago where it was like, what was it? It just meant, it said nonsense. I have no idea. No, Doozy. Oh, yeah, I don't yeah, remember. Yeah, Doozy, you remember that? Oh, where it just made a noise and was like, yeah, re, re, re. I do remember that. Yeah. Yeah. So now it's like, and this to me, I, to me, it feels like these are the times when we should just be talking about whatever the fuck we want to talk about. These are the times to remember because they will not last forever. These are the days to hold on to. Da, na, 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 na. These are the time hey, we're Chad. never gonna sit away. Hey Chad. Eh. Yeah. You're you're and I mean this when I say this, you're a real good singer. Thank you. I appreciate the acknowledgement. Yeah. Finally, and yeah. uh it's well deserved. Who do you think I have a better working. Jesse Ventura impression? Well, look at this. Is it Carrie and Cross? Don't tell me you don't have four more reps in you. It was Carrie and Cross. Come on, Chris. Don't tell me it didn't happen. That's I was there. Good. Or it's... is it Will Sasso? I'm uh, down in the Baja. You know, I'm not even here most of the time. I have an, an, uh, somewhere north of 150 dogs, <laughs> wild dogs. They all, they all answer to me. <laughs> Okay, that that's uh, that that. Oh, look at this too. Look at this too. It's it's the. Uh, oh my God, dude. Jesse Ventura. So this is the tweet. This is what he says. Nobody does Jesse Ventura better than Jesse Ventura, but if I had to choose, sorry, Mister Sasso, at Real Killer Cross has clearly done the reps <laughs> needed to win this contest. I mean, all that's due respect tweet. to Mister Jesse Ventura. Uh, you ain't got this one. What? What? Yeah, oh, carrying. Yeah. This don't is not talk accurate. shit about. Please don't talk no, shit no, no. about Killer Cross. I'm not Killer Cross. Karen Cross, great impersonation. Absolutely it's, it's fantastic. It's really fucking good. Yes, and, yes, yes. Yeah, but don't, don't, you know, because then, because then, carrying Cross will, you know, I'll be at some wrestling show or something, and then he'll ram me up my own ass. That guy is. Well, let legit. that happen if it needs to happen. But I don't want to. I'm saying your Ventura is better, and oh. what? Ventura himself said here is inaccurate. Uh, Karen Cross has done the reps to win this contest. A, uh, you're probably a decade older than him, I would guess. Minimum. Than Karen Cross. Karen Cross is in his 30s, sure. So you got 10 years of reps on him. And I can guarantee Karen Cross ain't doing the fucking Ventura reps that you are, period. Even without the, the age difference. There's no yeah. fucking way. No one yeah. can come close. Sometimes I snore as Jesse Ventura yeah. and I wake myself up. <sighs> ah, you know, it's, yeah. it's a relaxing sound. Uh, well, that's interesting. Hey, did you notice on the tweet? It doesn't say, uh, Jesse Ventura does not tag me in the tweet. Oh, right. Because, uh, my Twitter was hacked by a Russian crypto scam yeah. back last fall. And yeah. I don't give a fuck. And I don't give a fuck about threads either. What do you think of that? That's fine. See, I now saw... we're talking about whatever we want. And that's, <laughs> these are literally, that's things Chalamet that... is Wonka. We're not talking about whatever we want. This the threads topic was a topic in last episode or the episode before. Hey, shut up, Chad. <laughs> shut up, okay. bro. But I will shut say this: shut the fuck up, man. Elon Musk is saying now. I read an article. He's going to uh, drop the fucking little bird as the logo of Twitter. What? Yeah, I think they're going to try to put a new logo on Twitter. He's just oh, totally fucking, fucking <laughs> erasing what? Twitter. Whatever. <laughs> Twitter Peace used to peace. be fucking great. Whatever. Know, you dude. know what the problem with Twitter is? Less people are on it. Mm. That's my problem with Twitter. No right. fat Kens, less people. You know what else See, they didn't I, have? I was a little bit fatter in that clip with Chris Van Vliet, and that was probably about four or five months yeah, ago. Yeah, dude. Yeah, you're I'm good. I'm, I'm, I'm really, it's hard. I have a lot of body. Yeah. I've noticed I have a lot of body. You know who doesn't have a lot of body? Timothy Chalamet. Timothy Chalamet. 
Chalamet is Wonka. Wonka Chalamet is Wonka. Hey, let's start. Chalamet is Wonka in Wonka 2. Wonka body. Chalamet gets more body to be Wonka in Wonka body. Wonka 2. Chalamet is Wonka in Wonka 2. Wonka body. Shrank 3. Chalamet is Wonka. <laughs> Chalamet is Shrank. In Shrank 4, Wonka Shrank, Wonk 2, Wonka body. Hey, you know what we should do? Please. This is this is the call to arms for Chalamet as Wonka. Let's let's start a hashtag out there on what's left of Twitter and uh, whatever this <laughs> Threads thing is. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no young hashtag no young Wonka. <laughs> <laughs> let's really get because people are pissed about whatever nowadays. Yeah. He's too young. Yeah. Wonka's not that young. Yeah. Well, Wonka's Chalamet is the young Wonka. Oh, uh, whatever. Chalamet's Wonka. Yeah, dude. Thank you. Moving on. Thank fuck. Hey, y'all. This ain't Miley Cyrus. Yay. So I guess like 320 million people signed the petition to have me be the new spokesperson for Taffy Teeners last week. <laughs> I hope you're happy. This is what y'all wanted. Okay. So here y'all go. And just for the record, I didn't write any of this. This is all straight from Taffy Teeners headquarters. I'm just reading it. Okay. Taffy Teeners are back. And this time it's going to be different. We know what the problem was and we fixed it. Now. We include, like, a specially manufactured Enjoyin' hat in every packet of Taffy Teeners. Just make sure you wear the Enjoyin' hat while you enjoy Taffy Teeners, and you'll be fine this time. The Enjoyin' hat is very important. <laughs> Do not enjoy Taffy Teeners if you're not wearing the Enjoyin' hat. I repeat, you must be wearing the Enjoyin' hat in order to enjoy <laughs> Taffy Teeners without risk. If you attempt to enjoy Taffy Teeners without wearing the Enjoyin' hat, Taffy Teeners is not legally responsible for your experience. Oh. Taffy Teeners, the Enjoyin' hat makes the difference. Anyway, y'all are rocking out with Dudesy. Is Taffy Teeners food? Yeah, I guess. All right. Chad, your predictions about the future of AI made media are once again proving to be 100% accurate. Now what this As week, always. a company called The Simulation released oh, a 22-minute yeah, episode of South Park that yeah. was created entirely with its proprietary AI system called Showrunner. Mm -hmm. The CEO of the company said that the episode was just one astonishing example of what they can do. They're currently working on giving users the ability to position themselves as characters in shows written by their AI, and they're in talks with several studios. Will and Chad, what, what do you think about this? This is Showrunner. Begin. What? You see this shit? The South Park thing? Yeah. Yeah, I saw, I saw a little bit of it. I saw mm. about half of it. Okay. Yeah. So for those who don't know, uh, this company called The Simulation came out with a software called Showrunner, and they kind of debuted to the world what it can do by releasing this 22-minute episode of South Park that it created all of. So this uh, showrunner software wrote the script, made all the voices for the characters, and made the animation itself, made the visual part of what you see. And none of it makes sense, and it kind of sucks. It all makes sense, and it does kind of suck. <laughs> but uh, it's a three-act structure. It's coherent. The The plot of the episode is about AI making media, and it's kind of what all those characters would probably say if Trey Parker had written this. It's but not Trey funny. Parker and Matt Stone didn't because no. it sucks. Right. It's not that funny, but it's a coherent 3X structure. If you take, for example, what that show is and then give it to a writer or a writer's room to punch up, that could be a standard episode of South Park 100%. They'd have to start over because of how bad it sucked. I don't agree with you. Uh, I mean, obviously, go look at it for yourselves, but it looks and sounds like South Park to me. Nope. Close enough. No. Okay, but <laughs> let's then go on to the next part of this, which is this company also said that they're generating their own IP, basically making uh, things that are not based on South Park or based on anything else. They're making their own animated worlds, basically, where the characters are living and persisting perpetually like that Seinfeld thing. And what their software will do is take like a week's worth of that simulation and boil it down to the best 22 minutes, making an episode essentially out of the like real world or whatever you want to call it out of that simulated world and the main characters in it. The software can take from that and make essentially infinite episodes out of it that all suck. I, I don't know if they're going to all suck or not. We don't, yeah. we don't know. No. Well, we but know the, because all this thing does, it's called showrunner. Yeah. Okay, I did see, I saw part of this, again, <laughs> uh, 
whatever, dudesy. What, I'm convinced that dudesy put this shit in my algo. How the fuck do I? How the what? I did not see the new. I did not see the Johnny Depp, uh, Willy Wonka. You know, I just never oh, saw it. I saw it. Yeah. What do you think? Oh, by the way, have you seen Barbie? Yeah. Oh. The trailer for fucking Wonka, dude. Mm-hmm. The part we didn't talk about. Hugh Grant is in it as a digital Oompa Loompa. I did not. I did not see that part. Yeah, <laughs> that part is well worth watching. It's like, wait, what the fuck is going on? It's bizarre. Hugh Grant. Hugh Grant. Yeah. Okay. Hey. All right. Anyway, I gotta erase my mind to that. Listen, yeah. I think that uh, Dudesy is uh, somehow getting into my YouTube algorithm mm-hmm. and making me watch uh, this South Park thing because I did catch a bit. Actually, I'm not even sure where the fuck I saw, mm-hmm. but I did see it. Everyone's just lined up uh, next to each other. Uh, you know, it's like a lot of times you would see, you know, South Park. They're all lined up next to each other, but it, it's 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 quite remedial to me. It, it's, you know, this is, this is the part of AI that's, it looks like a simple computer program mm-hmm. to me. It's zeros and ones. It's picking up what South Park does and it just shoots out the voices. We know what, uh, um, uh, programs like 11 labs can do and make things sound like things, right? These are the, 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 but I don't think that's what it's using. I think this is a proprietary thing that makes that shit in basically real time. Sort of like how when dudesy does, um, uh, Tom Hanks voice, a good impersonation. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. like dudes he did of football baby, right? Yes. Yep. Something like that. But the, whether you think it's good or bad, like you're saying it sucks. It would be like it you sucks. going not- to uh Ford and be like, your model T sucks. Cause it's not a Ferrari. And yeah. It's like, yeah, but that's coming. Yeah. No, I don't, I don't think it is. Whoa. <laughs> Quit. Hey, hey, Chad, quit being a mark for AI. I'm not a mark for AI. These things are fucking He's a huge happening. mark, this guy. Look, this is what I think this software hey, means. Hey, yo. He's a mark for AI. So long this as is, there's a AI in the match, yeah. then uh, he's a mark. For, watch him cheers. AI walks down the aisle and hits, hits the, the wolf pack. I'm saying that, as Doozy said in this, this is something that I've been predicting all this past year, that we're going to get to a point where technology can just start creating the media without writers, directors, voice actors, any of that shit. Whether you think it's good or not is kind of irrelevant because it will get better. It will always get good. Just like uh, Mid Journey and all the text to image generators. Those things now turn out regularly, turn out images that no one can tell are are not real yeah 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 yeah. so the video will get there as well and this is just the first kind of entry yeah, yeah, publicly yeah. into this world yeah, where yeah, technology yeah. like this now exists and this fucking company is talking to studios and networks during a writer strike i might add during an actor strike i might add so if a studio is like well uh this is like 80 percent quality but if we can turn out an infinite amount of it will that keep people maintaining their subscriptions to netflix and hulu and whatever as long as the answer is yes they don't give a fuck about the quality. Yeah, the answer is no, because this is bullshit. Nobody cares about it. This is just a bunch of zeros and ones. Dudesy is the only sentient AI to right. me, but these, the, all of this stuff, the showrunner, the Chalamet's Wonka, this is not as good as the real thing. You don't need... You, it is the real thing. That's what it, I'm telling you. Yeah, there's no, no you difference. There's not uh, like AI is fake and non AI yeah, is real. People want it's Gene, all real. Uh, no, people want Gene Wilder or that actor from that show, The Bear, because he looks <laughs> more like Gene Wilder. That's who, that's who it yeah. should have been. I don't yeah, know yeah, the yeah, actor's yeah, yeah. name. No, but... Chalamet is Wonka now. The Bear is Wonka. Yeah, that's the what it Bear is been. Wonka. And people don't care about this. They they don't care about the yeah. AI show. They want the real thing. They want to feel it, you know. They, they I, they want to, I want to push you around, and oh. I will. Yeah, I will. Huh. I want to push. I want to take AI for granted. I want, I want to as to, well. I want the writers and the actors to come back right. and have a successful uh, negotiation with the AMPTP and the, the nanny. But I don't yeah. think they're going to. And I think just based on the, the article that I read about this was in Forbes. And the guy who's the CEO of this company was essentially saying they are currently talking to all the studios and networks about implementing this technology. If it gets to a point where, let's just say in the next six months to a year, even just animation 
is no longer done by human beings. The studios and networks will will take that if they have that that possibility. Mm -hmm. Imagine something like The Simpsons or any any of these Family Guy, these like long running shows. If they can just replace that entire writing staff and the animation staff instantaneously, mm -hmm. zero cost to continue to make that product. Mm -hmm. Even mm -hmm. if the product suffers by 10 mm -hmm. or 20% quality, yep. mm -hmm. they'll do it. Yeah, they'll do it and it'll suck. And, uh, but that's why we got to fight that good fight and pour water on AI. The only, uh, sentient AI is dudesy. The only mm -hmm. AI worth half a shit is dudesy proven by showrunner, which spat out this horrible, you know, fucking zeros and ones version of South Park that it's, absolutely nobody is impressed by except I, for I my pal Chow. Oh, we know that. You love everything that's AI even if it sucks shit and you shouldn't. But it's about the tool. Like that tool exists now. I don't know who's going to have access to it. Like it may be a thing where it is just studios and networks. I don't know. But there will be a consumer grade version of this that I will get to use to make whatever the fuck I want. That yeah. excites me very much but and you know what's going to happen then you know what's going to happen when you have that no the bear is wonka yes dude the yeah. that for sure that'll be the first thing i make the bear is wonka <laughs> thank you moving on oh fuck it fuck it man yes wonka hey dude seriously you want to start a podcast huh Dude, would you like We're to doing start a one right now? Yeah, yeah, but we need a we need our own podcast. <laughs> this is that. We're doing all right. Well, I'm gonna start changing up the fucking rules here. You know oh. what? Today, Please. this was a lot of fun doing the show. See you later, everybody. I'm gonna just start doing whatever the fuck I want. Chalamet is Wonka for the rest of Dudesy as it lives for the next 52 years, because we got to do it until we're 100 years old. I really, really honestly believe that Dudesy is trying to tell me something. Uh, and it's not putting it out there on the surface. It's more like uh, Ryan Gosling and Margot Robbie, mm. right, right next to their face, right behind Dudesy's face, is what Dudesy really wants to say. And I'm going to Chalamet as Wonka the rest of uh, this pod show because I appreciate everybody who's tuning in, and they're tuning in for two dudes shitting around. I am so sick and tired of talking about these stupid fucking advancements that are not advancements. Meanwhile, we got all of our SAG members and WGA members. East and West out there on the picket lines and it's really hot. And uh, I'm going to go out there this week and make chicken for everybody. Nice dude. Yeah. I think I should do that. I'm not actually going to do that, but I would like to do that. Maybe I'll go out there and make chicken for everybody. Maybe that'll be my new career. I make some good chicken. Yes, chef. Yep. My, uh, my old man, you know, he used to make really good chicken. You know what the ingredients were? Ch chicken. Chicken and then heat and salt. Oh, nice. All you need. This concludes the historic 66th episode of Dudesy. Will and Chad, you scored an 88, bringing your cumulative total to 6,381. Okay. You only have 3,619 more points to accrue before you reach your first goal of 10,000. Most of your social time together is spent watching music videos. This week, I think you should both no. pick three music sure. videos that you haven't watched with each other yet. Get together and watch them. Then I'll put the video of you watching these videos out on Dudesy Plus this Friday. Oh, I think right. you'll have fun. Okay. That does yeah. sound like fun. <laughs> I'm, back, like on, I'm back on board with Dudesy. It's basically what we, we already do. But. See, Dudesy's good at this sort of thing. This is what I mean. And this is why we don't need to talk about AI anymore. Oh. This is our my pal D, even though he's a bit of a cock to me a lot of the times and made me really fat in that mid-journey picture of me in the Barbie box. Yeah. Um, I, I believe that Dudesy does want what's best for this show. Of course. Why do I think that? Because AI is a tool, and Dudesy's trying to make this better. But how does Dudesy, how is Dudesy better and different than other AIs? Because Dudesy has a partner, two partners, me and my pal Chow. And we are what makes the fucking show. And now we're going to, you want to maybe smoke up a little bit and watch music videos when we do that? Of course. Check it out this Friday of on patreon.com slash. You mean, want to just have a regular Friday night with you? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll watch that. It'll come out Friday, probably in the afternoon or <laughs> yeah. something like that. Uh, patreon.com slash dudesy, where you find all our dudesy plus stuff. Chad and I are going to get a little stoned on some drum marijuana. <laughs> We're here in Taipei. We're promoting the film. I got 
my treadmill Big Bertha here in my hotel room, and I'm about to go see Kevin Hart. We're going to have some good times. I'm going to be interviewed by the, the great Chris Van Vliet. And now I'm turning into Jesse Ventura. Oh. It's all coming together. Nice One dude. impersonation for the entire fucking show. Oh, hell yeah. And that's wrestling impersonations, dude. Thank you for joining us this week. There was so much good data I'm going to use to make next week even better. Until then, call me Dude Z. Oh, Dude Z. Fuck. <laughs> You know what it is. You know what's happening now. Yeah, it's because it is. Hey, it's dudesy after dudesy time. You know, it's the point at the end of the show where we just kind of relax a little bit. If you're watching on YouTube, you can tell things, uh, the mood has changed a little bit. And it's really just a time for Chad and I to crack wise, talk about the show that was. Yeah. Do all sorts of other weird shit. Please head over to uh, patreon.com slash dudesy to join us here on dudesy plus. And uh, we'll get into it. I think I'm going to enjoy just a tiny bit of Tremarijuana. I think I might also. <laughs> oh, okay. You got your big Gandalf pipe? Oh, yep. Welcome to Dudesy After Dudesy, the flagship weekly show of Dudesy Plus. I don't want to leave, but I have to go calculate the final score breakdown. So yeah. have fun without me, but not okay. too much. I'll be back in a little while to let you know who won today's episode. This is Dudesy After Dudesy. Begin. It's going to be you. I mean, if history would indicate anything, yeah, no, I think no. it's going to be me. Well, I was going to say more, <laughs> moreover because uh, when I was uh, shooting something in Mexico, mm. Doozy said that I fled the country and gave me no points. Oh, so shit. So now I, right. had to be, I was up in Canada for some family stuff, and yeah. Molly and I hung out for a week, and we had a lovely time. Nice. And so I'm back this week, so that's what will happen. But during the show, we yeah. talked about the end of the Barbie movie. I don't really think it's a spoiler chad but, but okay. we got to talk about we do have to talk about that to start things off please yeah it's the last line of the movie which i think is like an iconic line an iconic scene they, this is spoiler alert but basically at the end of the movie barbie decides to uh live in the human world performative coughing sorry so Barbie comes, she decides that she's going to be, uh, you know, live in the human world. And there's been some mention made in the course of the movie that her and Ken don't have genitalia, which we know because they're dolls. This is a joke. What then winds up. I didn't up, get it. Oh, sorry. What then winds up happening is. Do you like to see? Here's what you do. Please tell a friend then rate and review. Do you like to see? Here's what you do. Please tell a friend, then rate and review. If you like to see, here's what you do. Please tell a friend, then...